if it were up to me, you'd be swinging from the end of a rock. The Seeker has removed one of her gauntlets in order to flex her wrist. It bears inflamed marks from where shackles bit into her. She sees... You must be starved for company to linger around here, friend. Nothing. She just keeps spitting out her name and rank. Having her leader lying next to her must have hardened her resolve. She'll talk eventually, if she has any sense. You and half of Rivalon, friend. But no, he hasn't made a sound. He'll be in for a rude awakening when he does come to. All right then, just... Don't make me regret it. I'll keep an eye on the red until the cage is locked again. A young magister paces around the brig, fussing over Alexander's unconscious form. She leans over and applies a damp cloth to his brow. She notices you observing her. She straightens her back and sets her jaw in a defiant scowl. Magister Ranley, cork has made her the divine eminence vessel, Lady Vengeance. That's all the information I'm giving to any of you lot, so stow your questions. Magister Ranley, Corker's mate of the Divine Eminence vessel, Lady Vengeance. Ranley, Corker's mate, Lady Vengeance. Ranley, Corker's mate, Lady Bloody Vengeance. The Magister pauses, takes a deep breath, and. Magister Ranley, Corker's mate of the Divine Eminence vessel, Lady Vengeance. Magister, she notices Magister Ranley, Corker's mate of the divine. The Magister pauses. Magister Ranley, Corker's mate of the divine eminence vessel, Lady I Vengeance. Find useful. away from him sorcerer that's the divine prisoner or not i swore an oath touch him again and i'll kill you <laughs> I ought to chain you up like your lot did to me. Magister Ranley, Corker's mate of the Divine Eminence Vessel, I warned you not to touch you. Thank you. 
Ifan grabs you by the sleeve, not hard, but insistent. Let me work on him. I've got questions that need answers. Answers I can only get from him. Ifan approaches Alexander, who lies flat on a bare wire cot. Though unconscious, Alexander's eyes are only half closed. His swollen jaw hangs open at an odd angle. Ifan grabs him by the jaw and shakes violently. Alexander's face contorts with agony and his eyes flutter, yet he doesn't return to consciousness. Why did you trigger the death fog before the elves had a chance to escape? Why? Why? No matter how loud Ifan shouts his questions, there is no response from the unconscious Alexander. He reaches his arm back, and you realize he intends to punch Alexander in the face. As if waking from a dream, he turns to you, disoriented. Hesitantly, he drops his fist until it hangs loosely by his side. Sheepish now, he scratches the side of his head with his other hand. You're right there. With a nod, Ifan strides away. Bishop Alexander lies supine on a bare wire cot. Though unconscious, his eyes are only half closed. His swollen jaw hangs open at an odd angle. Bruises swell beneath his eyes, and a shallow gash zigzags from his right ear down to his beardless cheek. Unconscious, he looks more boy than bishop. Someone has wiped the bishop's hands clean and folded them neatly over his abdomen. They rise and fall in shallow, jagged swells. A beautiful six-sided gem rests on the bishop's chest, hung round his neck by an ordinary oiled rope. The gem sits heavily in your pouch. Bishop Alexander lies supine on a bare wire. The bishop's white robes are stained with blood and dirt. He appears shrunken in their billowing mass. Seeker has removed one of her gauntlets in order to flex her wrist. It you must be starved for company to linger around here, friend. I'm not seeing, but what? Hey, you're here. Pretty nice bow, eh? We got an upgrade. There's got to be another way to get it going, but we can't find a way into Dallas's room. Maybe you can see something we can't. The door is still unmarked, though the memory of the face and its six-sided notch remains with you. The anguished face appears once more. It dips its forehead towards you and waits. A shudder of pleasure racks the figure in the door. 
It seems to breathe. All of a sudden, all anguish is gone. It gives you the sternest of looks. I am summoned. Speak the password. Yes, and yes again. The word is spoken. Well... He clicks together two halves of some type of gauntlet sitting in his lap and turns his full attention to you. A An undead, eh? Wonders never cease aboard this vessel. Ah, beggars can't be choosers, I suppose. Especially when it comes to their rescuers. To whom do I owe my thanks? Such a limiting word, but yes, it serves that purpose, amongst others. Dallas has been keeping me prisoner here, but I try to keep working on my own projects when I can. kind of metalwork the Magisters deploy. This is in a different class to them. As I said, the Magisters left me weakened. But this will help give me the strength to carry on my work. Dallas took a particular interest in me and my skills. I'm an expert in healing, crafting, and uh, more arcane practices. She kept me here to do her bidding. Until you took her flagship from right under her nose, it seems. Oh, yes. And she could be a most cruel mistress, I'm sad to report. He extends his arm and pushes up the sleeve. Beneath, the skin is withered and discolored, as if it were magically decayed. She used some form of domination device on me, forcing my hands to do her bidding. And I've ruined them in the process. Oh, cast spells, tinker with relics, meddle with the laws of nature. All the sorts of things power-hungry despots love to do. She had me enchant a dead cat over there, so it would seem alive. He clicks the gauntlet into place around his withered forearm, his eyes on you the whole time. That damn contraption that she used on me seems to fog my memory. The rest is... A blur. No! 
Necromancy is an unsavory practice. Surely you above all understand that. Dragged back from your slumber to live some sort of half-life. The cat is a cunning illusion that I devised. Nothing more. His face abruptly creases into a smile. But come now. Enough of Dallas and dead cats. You've taken this ship and granted my freedom. This is a happy moment. I am not some commonplace dullard losing his mind to fear and superstition. Your condition is merely another curio for me to ponder. I'm afraid I cannot tell you what I do not remember. Could you pass me that copper wire just there? He takes the copper with a nod of gratitude. His sleeve slips back above his elbow. In its crook, you see part of a tattoo. A pattern of concentric circles rendered in black. Perhaps my memory will come back with time. But for now, I'm afraid there's little more I can add. I'm doing my utmost to be civil to you, under rather trying circumstances. Why must you push me like this? You're painting me into a corner here, friend. And I don't like to be cornered. If this one was enslaved by Dallas, then he could still be under her thrall. We can't risk keeping him around. The Seekers are too trusting by half. We can't just let this healer go free. Something tells me that he'll only bring us woe. But I can't judge him. Yet. Unperturbed, he holds up his index finger in a one-moment-please gesture before tightening a hinge upon his gauntlet. Ah, that's better. Now, as you were saying, the hard way?
What's this? I found something. Under lock and key. I stalk my my tail rattle. I suffer. Mumsy, is she here? Mumsy, where are you? Tis I, Boopley Bear. I am quite changed, but there is no shame in being ridiculous in the name of love. The cat begins to purr and rub itself on your ankles. Any friend to Mumsy is a friend to me. I believe the song is around here somewhere. The song, of course. Trouble not my weary mind with dancery. The cat purrs, an eerie, clicking sound. Tell Mumsy to come back soon. Now that I am but bone, I'm too light to trip the moving door. I'm sh... Oh, well, I've spotted so something there. I was looking at his bone structure for academic purposes. And you thought Rivalon was There's flat. nothing to be jealous of, honestly.
you thought Rivalon was flat. This is written in ancient lizard script. It appears to be a song. Looks like a teleport appearance. Boring. A teleporter pyramid. Only one way to find out if it works. Try using it.
way shall I fly? Invasive maneuvers, Quaggas!
Which way shall I?